In economist Mark Thornton, he's a senior fellow at the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Hi there. I'm going to ask you if you've got any Bitcoins, but I shan't start with that. That'd be too nosy. What do you make of this milestone, sir? Well, I think it's a matter of uh, just, just a matter of time that this Bitcoin took over. And what we've seen recently is that there's a lot more acceptance of Bitcoin by both merchants and by governments. Even Amazon this week. What's that? Even Amazon this week. Oh, yes. And even at the Louis von Mises Institute, we now accept Bitcoins for donations and bookstore sales. So it's, it's in, in other countries, the acceptance of retailers is even greater. But more importantly, governments have recognized Bitcoin. They're willing to accept it. They realize that it's the type of currency going forward in the world where it's more secure, it's more private, it's more efficient, and it holds its value better as well. What about that old saying, though, what goes up must come down at some point in brackets? Oh, well, this is a very, very volatile uh, medium of exchange. It's, and it's not surprising that it's very volatile because it's reacting to world events. And, you know, there's 36 other cryptocurrencies that are also vying in the marketplace. So we, we have a lot of volatility to look forward to. So uh, it's not something you want to kind of put your pension in then, really, is it? Well, the people who are putting their money in it are the people who face a lot of risk. A lot of people in China are putting their money into it. A lot of people in India are putting their money into it. And a lot of people in Iran are putting their money into it because they're facing hyperinflation and the prospects for military attack on their country. Of course, uh, the American government and the FBI are looking very closely at it as well because it has been used as well for shady deals, drug deals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, but Bitcoin accounts for less than one half of one percent of all of its transactions in entirety compared to the worldwide illegal trade in goods and services. So it's a very, very small player. And actually, it's the U.S. dollar that is the medium of, ex of exchange of choice uh, of criminals around the world. We talked, about well how, we talked about how Bitcoin's catching on just now. Um, it's really catching on in China, isn't it? I guess no surprises. But why particularly China? Well, they've, the government has accepted it in full. Uh, Chinese merchants have accepted it in full. And of course, there's also been a political turnover. And with that political turnover, there's going to be reprisals. And some, so some of those high government bureaucrats are probably putting their money into Bitcoin in order to exit the country. Well, with the rate that's been going at the moment up and up and up, when's it going to be snapping at the dollar's heels, do you think? Uh, well, yes, I think you're going to see much higher prices for Bitcoin. Uh, I don't forecast market prices, but I think that over time, you're going to see Bitcoin uh, rising in value because fiat currencies are continuing to depreciate around the world. We're in a world currency war, and that spells good things for investors in Bitcoin. Economist Mark Thornton, thank you for your thoughts. Nice to have you on the program. Thank you.